Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at whatever happened to the creator of Calvin and Hobbes. It was on November the 18th, 1985, when Calvin met Hobbes. As the first appearance of this legendary comic strip shows, Calvin sets a trap for a tiger using a tuna sandwich because tigers will do anything for a tuna fish sandwich. Sure enough, hanging by one foot and munching on the sandwich, Calvin's freshly caught tiger confirms this. He says, we're kind of stupid that way. Almost exactly 10 years later, the comic's elusive creator, Bill Watterson, abruptly called it quits, despite the comic's extreme popularity. So, how did it all come together? Why did it last only a decade? And what has Watterson been doing in the over two decades since he retired at the young age of just 38? Well, Watterson was born in Washington, D.C. in 1958 and lived in Alexandria, Virginia with his mother and father, who was a patent attorney. But when Watterson was six, they moved to Chagrin Falls, Ohio, which is about 24 miles east of Cleveland. In later interviews, Watterson talked a lot about how growing up in a small town encouraged him to use his imagination more, just like his creation Calvin. As a child, he was a big Peanuts fan, despite saying that, at the time, most of Peanuts went over my head. In fact, in the fourth grade, he wrote Charles Schultz, the comics creator, a letter. To his amazement, he got a response encouraging him to keep drawing, a letter that he claims he still has. By the time he was in the seventh grade, Watterson knew that he wanted to be a cartoonist or an astronaut, stating the latter was never much of a possibility. I don't even like to ride in elevators. For most of high school and college, Watterson thought he was going to be an editorial cartoonist and went to Kenyon College in Ohio to pursue that. As so often happens when anyone is first starting out at anything, the first few cartoons he produced were failures. There was Spaceman Spiff, a brash, stogie-smoking astronaut with incredible interstellar adventures, and who was always foiled by his dense assistant Fargal. There was another one about a newspaper reporter and his crazy editor, another one that featured a frog and a groundhog, and one called Critters about small bug-like creatures. Then, in 1983, he created In the Doghouse, a strip featuring a 20-something Sam and his slacker friend Festa, plus Sam's little brother Marvin, who happened to have a stuffed tiger who he called Hobbs. In the Doghouse didn't get any love, but Melvin and Hobbs did, and he decided to give them a comic of their own. Unfortunately for Watterson, there was another strip, Marvin and Family, going by that same name, so he decided to switch the name to Calvin. Of this, Watterson explains, Calvin is named for a 16th century theologian who believed in predestination. Most people assume that Calvin is based on a son of mine or based on detailed memories of my own childhood. In fact, I don't have children, and I was a fairly quiet, obedient kid, almost Calvin's opposite. One of the reasons that Calvin's character is fun to write is that I often don't agree with him. Ultimately, Universal Press Syndicate picked up on the comic, and on November the 18th, 1985, Calvin and Hobbes made its debut. It was a hit, and within a year, it was published in nearly 300 newspapers. Something about a six-year-old boy who goes on adventures with his best friend, who's also a tiger that may or may not be real, really resonated with readers. As to why even Watterson himself wasn't exactly sure, stating he simply tried to write honestly, and I tried to make this little world fun to look at so people would take the time to read it. That was the full extent of my concern. You mix a bunch of ingredients, and once in a while, chemistry happens. I can't explain why the strip caught on the way it did, and I don't think I could ever duplicate it. A lot of things have to go right all at once. He does note, though, that Calvin is an outlet for everyone's inner child, both the good and the bad. He's a kid with an imagination, an excitement about life, and a belief in the magical, but he's also immature and somewhat of a terror. Watterson further explained in 1995 in the Calvin and Hobbes 10th anniversary book that Calvin is autobiographical in the sense that he thinks about the same issues that I do, but in this, Calvin reflects my adulthood more than my childhood. Many of Calvin's struggles are metaphors for my own. I suspect that most of us get old without growing up, and that inside, every adult, sometimes not very far in inside is a bratty kid who wants everything his own way. I use Calvin as an outlet for my immaturity, as a way to keep myself curious about the natural world, as a way to ridicule my own obsessions, and as a way to comment on human nature. I wouldn't want Calvin in my house, but on paper, he helps me sort through my life and understand it. As for Hobbes, Watterson said he partially based the tiger's personality on his own cat, a grey tabby named Sprite. 
In particular, Hobbes's habit of meeting Calvin at the door with a mid-air high-velocity pounce was something Watterson states his cat used to do as well. He goes on that he made sure Hobbes, despite acting human-like, kept many of his feline qualities, like his demeanor and prideful attitude in being a cat. Watterson also notes, Like Calvin, I often prefer the company of animals to people, and Hobbes is my idea of an ideal friend. In terms of the overriding question of the comic strip, if Hobbes is real or not, the author again attempts to clear it up, but not in the way that most would think. The so-called gimmick of my strip, the two versions of Hobbes, is sometimes misunderstood. I don't think of Hobbes as a doll that miraculously comes to life when Calvin's around. Neither do I think of Hobbes as the product of Calvin's imagination. Calvin sees Hobbes one way, and everyone else sees Hobbes another way. I show two versions of reality, and each makes complete sense to the participant who sees it. I think that's how life works. None of us see the world exactly the same way, and I just draw that literally in the strip. Hobbes is more about the subjective nature of reality than about dolls coming to life. By 1995, Calvin and Hobbes was one of the most popular comics in the world, syndicated in over 2,400 newspapers worldwide, with more than 24 million copies of the 14 book collections having been sold. And it was at that point, with all that success, that Watterson decided to call it quits. In November of 1995, and at the age of only 38 years old, Watterson announced his retirement from creating Calvin and Hobbes comics, stating publicly, I will be stopping Calvin and Hobbes at the end of this year. This was not a recent or easy decision, and I leave with some sadness. My interests have shifted, however, and I believe I have done what I can do within the constraints of daily deadlines and small panels. I am eager to work at a more thoughtful pace with fewer artistic compromises. I have not yet decided on future projects. The last strip appeared on December 31, 1995, with the last panel showing the little boy and his tiger best friend setting down a snowy hill, with Calvin exclaiming, let's go exploring. So now the question comes around, and that's what has Watterson been doing since then? Well, mostly he's very purposefully been staying out of the public eye, earning him the distinction of the J.D. Salinger of comics. What little is known about his life since then is that he took up painting, but with no real interest in showing the world the results of his efforts, stating, My first problem is that I don't paint ambitiously. It's all catch and release, just tiny fish that aren't really worth the trouble to clean and cook. But yes, my second problem is that Calvin and Hobbes created a level of attention and expectation that I don't know how to process. Beyond painting, he also for a time would secretly autograph copies of his books at Fireside Bookshop in Ohio. But he stopped doing this when he found out that people were buying said copies and then selling them online for higher amounts. Beyond this pastime, he has occasionally published or contributed to books examining Calvin and Hobbes, such as the excellent book Exploring Calvin and Hobbes, an exhibition catalogue. But other than that and a little charity work here and there, as far as public record goes, he's seemingly just enjoying a quiet retirement and actively staying out of the public sphere. That said, 15 years after retiring in 2010, he did give a rare interview and was asked if he ever regretted calling it quits on Calvin and Hobbes at the peak of its fame. Of this, he stated, It's always better to leave the party early. If I had rolled along with the strip's popularity and repeated myself for another five, ten, or twenty years, the people now grieving for Calvin and Hobbes would be wishing me dead and cursing newspapers for running tedious ancient strips like mine instead of acquiring fresher, livelier talent. And I'd be agreeing with them. I think some of the reason Calvin and Hobbes still finds an audience today is because I chose not to run the wheels off it. I've never regretted stopping when I did. And now for a bonus fact. Watterson famously not only passed up, but fought vehemently against merchandising of Calvin and Hobbes, costing him many tens of millions of dollars in revenue. He stated of this that it wasn't so much that he was against the idea of merchandising in general, just that each product I considered seemed to violate the spirit of the strip, contradict its message, and take me away from the work I loved. Despite this, it's not terribly difficult to find merchandise of Calvin and Hobbes, but all are unauthorized copyright infringements, including the extremely common Calvin P. Castacus. Despite never having earned a dime from these, Watterson quipped in an interview with Mental Floss that, I figure that long after the strip is forgotten, those decals are my ticket to immortality. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that subscribe button below. We put out brand new videos every day of the week. Also, let me thank our patrons on Patreon. If you are interested in supporting this show and helping us keep making these daily videos, please do consider supporting us on Patreon. We have some great perks lined up for people who do support us, so please check that out at patreon.com forward slash today I found out, or check the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.